you got into doing murals? Oh Great. man, it's a long story. Um, so much fun we got. So I didn't grow up with around murals or graffiti. It's not part of like my, I don't know, my DNA and part of growing up. But once I moved to Boston, I was working at Artists for Humanity. Uh, it's a nonprofit um, art organization, and that's where I met my then supervisor and now mentor and big brother, um, Rob Gibbs. He also goes by Pro Black. Um, he is one of the pioneers of graffiti in the Boston scene. And so he would paint almost every weekend, like big pieces. And I was doing a lot of photography back then. So out of curiosity, I asked him if I could come along because he would share like his paintings over the weekend. Um, and so I tagged along and I was giving him photos like, you know, on the Monday that we meet. Um, and then he would tell me like what kind of photos he wanted um, of his mural. Um, and then over time, I was just following him everywhere. And then sure enough, kind of just fell in love with the... Um, with the art of graffiti, the art of stylizing letters, to a point where it represents your character and your personality. Uh, I thought that was like mind blowing. For me, like not having grown up with it, I was just like, what? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, so I started doing little graffiti pieces on my sketchbook and Rob would laugh at it, but you know, I, I, I was persistent. And um, I started painting at the graffiti alley that you must have visited. Uh, yeah. Did you guys go to the graffiti alley? We're going there next. Oh man, she's on there. Yeah, we're gonna go it's, there a next. it's a free wall. It's a free wall where anybody can go and paint. Um, and it's in Cambridge. It's pretty close to the wall that you saw today. Um, and so I would just go there and practice, you know, painting with spray paint. Rob showed me how to swing my first can and like can control and everything and he put me through the whole thing you know, like starting with rust before I started with any of the fancy cans and whatnot um, and then over time you know it felt like I was pretty okay at it technically but I felt like I was missing in the picture like I can paint but what's my connection to this art form that I didn't grow up around um, why is it you know why is it my work? How is it my work? Um, and then I thought about writing in my native letters, which I learned how to write before writing in English. And it's easier for me to stylize it because it's more part of me than anything else. And so when I figured that out, there was no going back. Um, it felt like it was uniquely mine and I could express myself in a way that felt Nepali and not like what people expect is Nepali. Or I didn't have to be like a cultural ambassador to a whole country right. that speaks more than two other languages. Like I just couldn't do it. And so I found something that was truly mine and authentic to my culture and my people. Um, and so that's how I kind of started. And then over time I found it um, more fun working with uh, calligraphy letters and then stylizing my letters accordingly. And that's how the style kind of came about. So yeah. before that, you were into photography. I was into photography. I was painting. You had, so you were painting so in then, college, so. yeah. In college, I majored in painting and globalization studies. Um, and then after I moved to the, and I was also doing photography a lot because I was seeing the world for the first time. I just moved to the USA. I just come back from studying abroad in like Geneva and Bali and like all these places. So for photography, felt like. The most you know, direct way of like documenting what I was seeing. Because my parents weren't around um, with me doing that stuff. My family wasn't around. So like for me to be able to share it um, was huge. So I was into photography, but I wouldn't say like, I don't know if I was like good as in like, I was a photographer, you know? Like I love taking photos and documenting. You were, you were a photographer. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that's how it came about. Doing what I do now. Yeah. And, I've, and I've enjoy doing what I do because it's kind of pushed me to various directions when I work with various clients and various brands in terms of like what they're looking for. I've been able to work with them without compromising my work, without diluting the cultural aspect of it. And it's given me even more confidence to stick with it. Because as an artist, if you can paint anything and everything, 
I guess you can get more like jobs and you can do more. But then I think now more than ever before, building a brand, like a personal brand, is very important. And I think my experience with it and then like doing the words that I do, it's been easy to stick with it. It's never been a struggle in terms of like, should I do this? It feels very right. But, yeah. So you mentioned that you've done um, a collaboration with a hair company. Mm -hmm. Any other um, like consumer brands or consumer products? Yeah, um, I've worked with Reebok um, in their artist collective. That was a great experience working with them. Um, I'm working with Mastercard at the, uh, at the moment. I'm working with the outdoor bag company where I'm having some of the bags designed, like I'm designing some of the bag patterns on it. So that's coming out soon. Um, what else? Emily, do you want to take some of that? A couple of more co collaborations that are coming up where I feel like I can share my culture authentically, but also speak to these uh, brands and their consumers, which is exciting for me because like. It excites me that people want that through that brand. It's like, I'm not changing Reebok's brand. Like, basically, I wrote not a stereotype in my hashtag, and we made t-shirts of it. And it sold out. You want to jump into the quick bike um, questions? So we have a thing called quick bike. Okay. Where we ask um, our guests, uh, whoever we're talking to, the same five questions. And they're going to ask them to you. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Ready? Yes. Hot seat. Hot seat. <laughs> What's the last good meal you ate besides this? Besides this? And where was it from? That's me. That's me here. It was me. Um, it was in Nepal. Okay. And my mom made it. Okay. It was um, the uh, best. What was it? Um, it was rice and curry and... There's two types of curries, and there's dal, which is like a lentil soup. Um, and yeah, that was, yeah, I can eat that every day. Well, I grew up eating that every day. Question number two. Who's someone that's pushing or inspiring you right now? My mom. Okay. Which is like Rob? Mom. Oh, mom. Mom on the wind, boy. Oh, yeah, my mom is crushing it right now. Yeah. All right, mom's crushing it. If you could steal, any one piece of art from anywhere in the world, what would it be? And not get caught. Yeah. You get away. It's just yours. Oh, I would steal the Black Series by Mark Ruffalo. They were like these huge. Mm -hmm. When they were mm -hmm. on view at the MFA, I went there at least 14 times that I can count just to sit there and like look at it. I could stare at it forever. It's like a serious painting. Yeah. Are those the ones that are in that? There's like a not a temple, but there's a building. Yes, church. There yeah. You go. See? Yeah. It's like I know a little something. My boy, culture. I'm culture. <laughs> <laughs> that is exquisite. <laughs> In every facet. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's those, true. Like I haven't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been there to see it. And they're all black. Yeah. I haven't been. I just know it exists. Right. And the more you look, you look at it, the more colors kind of reveal itself. Like to have that much understanding of color and a painting so powerful, you can meditate in front of it for so long. Yep. Okay. Foundation that watch out. He's <laughs> coming <laughs> out there. Uh, if you woke up tomorrow as a fictional character or with any superpower, who or what would it be? Easy. I would turn. I'd be myself, but I would have the power to make people like good people. So, like, if they were gonna make a bad decision. Maybe I'd look at them, maybe I would sense it, and I would turn it around. You want to be a black mother? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Without Got a it. lifetime of duty. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. 
Alright, I question five. But I wouldn't, like, the power, I wouldn't have to use it. Okay. Because, like, the mom, you just have to. Yeah. But obviously I would. But right. knowing that I would have yeah. a choice to ignore my child. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying this, but I shouldn't. No, no, but it's the truth, guys. Uh, last question. Uh, are there any exciting projects or events that people can know about coming up? Hmm. A show at the Boston Children's Museum. And, yeah, I already said I'm working with uh, MasterCard and Chrome Industries. And I have a show at my alma mater in Gettysburg College. Um, there, I just got the Young Alumni Award this morning. Nice. Oh, open the mail. Congratulations! <laughs> I got like this big like. It was not a give us your money post. Like yeah. I was just I was looking at it, I was like what? And so the president like sent me a message and like a handwritten note saying oh, it was nice to meet you in the fall. Blah blah blah. And I was like what? Ooh. Okay. Um, so that was cool. Because uh, last year I had a show at Harvard, which is my other alma mater, and so that was fun. Um, so doing a show there should be fun. You know, meeting my professors again. And that was really a place where I enjoyed learning, or started to enjoy learning so much, um, that I feel like I need to do that. So, yeah. That's all I can think of right now. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Was that five questions? That was five questions. Those are good questions. Those are fun questions. Oh, but yeah. also like... Good job. Uh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, those are fun questions. They're like not difficult, but yet you get to like know the person. Yeah, that, it's a yeah, different. You know that I'd like... If know, I was a thief, ignore, I'd know this. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I would ignore children. <laughs> <laughs> Show just be Sam, ignore children. <laughs> <laughs> Even though like, yeah. Cool. And all in one battery, baby. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Uh, what do you call us again? Mango Lassie. Lassie. Yeah, L-A-S-S-I. Lassie. Mad Scottish.